Ignite Your Radio. Covering Guyana from coast to coast. Demerara and Essequibo 99.1 FM. Furby's 99.5 FM. Kite Your Radio. Is 19 hours 35 in Guyana, and you're tuned into the radio with a difference. Yes, that's the right choice 99.1 and 99.5 FM. And it is time for your room 592. At the helm of this evening's program is none other than Dr. Yog Mohadio and senior journalist of Kaitro News, Leonard Gildari. Good evening, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good, to you good afternoon, Dr. Yog. Good evening to all of our viewers and listeners and good evening to our special guest mr charandas Basad. how are you sir charandas is in the house so leonard meanwhile we are getting mr charandas's audio fixed how how are how is your evening going leonard well it was busy since you and i would have had that uh, very entertaining i would say a uh, very lively discussion today uh, lots of calls I rushed down to do some work, and then the rain is uh, tearing. It's raining cats and dogs and whatever else it is. And then I ran up here. So it's been a very, very busy day. But thank yes, God. And I want to say been. welcome to everybody out there. It's going to be exciting. Charned ass in the house. Correct. It has been a packed day. And to our viewers and listeners all across Guyana, the Caribbean, and the diaspora, UK, United States, and Canada, across all countries. Welcome to Room 592 on Kaito Radio. As we look towards having an open discussion with Mr. Charandas Basad tonight, we also want to remind you that at 8 o'clock, we will be cutting out to go have a, an update from Commissioner Sais Gunraj on what would have transpired over the weekend and up to this evening at the Artichon Convention Center. So we will be jo connecting with Mr. Charandas Basad in a couple of moments. His, his uh, audio video has been a little bit faulty. Uh, in the meanwhile, Leonard and Mr. Basad, can you hear us, sir? Yes, you're very well, thank you. Thank you, and thank you for joining us. And to viewers and listeners out there, we are going to have a disc open discussion, Mr. Charandas Basad, as we welcome you to Room 592. And I wish to start off the program, Leonard, by saying that on this day, in 2015, the PPP lost power after 23 years. And Mr. Charandas Pasad was instrumental in getting APNU AFC elected to government. Sir, five days later on this anniversary, welcome to this show where we can analyze what has happened from 2015 to now. So how are you and how is the weather in Canada? Thank you very much for having me, my brother. Okay. How are you and how is it in Canada, sir? Well, we had some flurries this morning and it's supposed to be, uh, not next week, would be uh, officially summer. So we're in the heart of the spring and we're getting flurries. It's below, eight below the average temperature for the day today, like as it was last year. So we're still in the cold. And so, for me, I, yes. I don't know if I can say it in a line, Yog, but I'm in a hell of a position right now. Terrible position. Okay. Well, we'll get to that position just now. But I want you to say one word for me. I want you to repeat that one word three times. Let's hear you say it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, well, you, you have to ask maybe how I vote or how, I mean, if I want something, <laughs> I'll answer the question. I always answer will, questions, man. We will get to it. So viewers and listeners out there, we welcome Mr. Charandas Pasad to this uh, Room 592 on Kaito Radio. And Mr. Pasad, uh, you know your brother Yog here and, and Leonard Gildhari in studio. We will be asking you some tough questions, sir. And the first question I have for you, Mr. Pasad, there has been a lot of allegations in Guyana on the state media and elsewhere that Mr. Charandas Pasad was paid money, a million US dollars, to do what he did on the no confidence motion. It's a yes and no question, sir. Did you take a million dollars from anybody in Guyana to vote the way you did? 
Carol, um, Yog. Yes, sir. Terrible feed. I didn't hear anything after you said you said the magic word. Okay, I'm asking you. There has been a lot of talk in Guyana. People have accused Mr. Charandas Pasar of taking a million dollars for voting the way he did on the no confidence motion. Let's put that behind us. Did you or did you not take money to vote the way you did? That's an emphatic no, Yog. No, Good. a no, a no. <laughs> Great. Okay, so with that behind us, Mr. Prasad, it's one year, ago, uh, sorry, five years ago today five, yes. mm -hmm. that your, the, your buddies, uh, people who you're close with, people who you, you champion the cause with, people who you walk up and down this country with, got into power. Sir, tell us, what are you feeling today on that anniversary? Yog, I don't see that it's anything for me to celebrate because what we did, and I'm saying we... I describe some of these boys who were playing dominoes with me as the foot soldiers. Myself and Dr. Ramaya. Kepad Ramjatan, Nagamutu, and the, the well, he's the, let's just say Mr. Granger. They knew that without the team in Barbies, the AFC could not have taken the numbers that they took and so give to them. What I mean is, in the history of politics in Guyana, the PPP never lost a national seat in Region 6. That is where we're from. And when I say we, again, I'm referring to myself, Dr. Ramayan, and, and the foot soldiers, my good friends who did most of the groundwork for us. But in 2011, when we campaigned, the, PN, uh, the PNC was, was APNU then, AFC was by itself. We got from seven, we moved, sorry, from five, we moved to nine seats, and we took for the first time a national seat in Burbies, Region 6. That hit the PVP very hard. In 2015, when the coalition was formed on the uh, 14th of February, the Valentine's coalition, when we formed that coalition, we lost votes. But nonetheless, we had enough to take a one-seat majority. And so from then, I thought that the AFC, being in power, even though in a coalition, we were still AFC as a separate name, not blended in like all the other parties did and became APNU. We were, the, the government was APNU slash AFC. So I thought we would still have what I described as the controlling effect in parliament, like the pound weight on the scale. We could go either way. But on the first vote, and the one that ticked me off more than anything else was Prime Minister Hamilton Green's uh, pension bill. It, not, it wasn't a Prime Minister's pension bill. Prime Minister Hamilton Green's pension bill. Ten seconds only. That says that Hamilton Green, whose pension should not have been more than $100,000 a month, would have moved up to the pension that former Prime Minister Sam Hines is getting, a little over $2 million per month. Because when you're a parliamentarian and you're in excess of 12 years, you get 100% of your salary as pension. And at that time, 35 Would not have than a hundred thousand dollars a month. That's his pension. So when I questioned Nagamutu, I said, "Should we not be looking at this? Or why are we doing this?" He said, "Look, man. Anytime you tell this man anything that seems to be opposing what is being presented in Parliament, he said, "Look, just vote when we vote. That's it. That's how I became a yes man. And it was the yes that I said. They made me a yes man, and it was the yes that upset right. them. Right. Right." So I want to take a step back, sir, if you don't mind. Look, no, no, as I ahead. said, these, these were your buddies. You, you, you ate together, you drank together, you, you championed. And, and yes. based, based on what I would have seen written, and you appeared on other interviews, the, the Hamilton Greens pension bill and the sugar workers' betrayal seem to have been the two things that really turned it upside down for you. You want to elaborate a little bit? Yo, my father was a cane cutter in 1963. He was a representative for Gao, and he was laid off. One of 10 victimized workers in the strike. At that time, we were 14 of us. I know what it is to have no income in the home. I had a brother who died recently. The eldest, he was earning about maybe 100 or so, $150 a month as a school teacher, if that much. And he helped out. But 14 of us, the mom and dad, 16 in one house. 
What happened then? He participated in a strike and he was removed. When you do that to sugar workers, yo, we had a lot of land, we still do. And so we started planting farm, cutting wood to sell and these things. A lot of these cane cutters who were laid off from 2017, from the 2017 layoff in Wales to the one in Rosal, you put them on the bread line, assuming that an average family of cane cutters I think we lost them there, Yorg. Yeah. Yes. We seem to have a little... We would have lost to their... Um, we're not hearing. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, he's coming on back. So, uh, viewers and listeners out there, we are having Mr. Charanas Basad as we look at, uh, you know... Yes, sir, you're back. Yeah, sorry, man. I don't know. It's... it's you know what? Because they know that I'll be on this program tonight, they probably give you all kinds of electrical this and that anyways <laughs> what i'm saying though yeah yo, yo, i'll cut it down shortly when you lay off of one sugar worker an average of four per family you have put four people out of the on the bread line and so when you lay off seven thousand sugar workers that is seven times four 28 people are hustling for food and Ghana yeah, yeah, is not like canada and and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes Okay, so meanwhile, we are getting Mr. Charandas Passat back to us. Our apologies. It's a rainy night, so I guess there may be some issues with the data streaming. Um, and uh, while that is happening, Mr. Passat has uh, highlighted two things that has affected uh, his, his history there. And one would have been the way the sugar workers were treated. He's just said that every time, every one of the 7,000 sugar workers that would have been let go, um, affected four minimum four other persons, so that's twenty eight thousand persons that would have that's been, right. that that hurt him pretty badly because it went against the grain of not just human justice but upon which they they, they campaigned. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, we promised workers. When I say we, all of us, Nagamutu Ramjatan, we would cook and eat by my my house when they have meetings in Burbis. But you know, all of that is in his life. We were buddies. We were good friends. Right. So, Mr. Passat, I don't know if, if you're still there. I see like your screen is a little still. But some of the questions we have for you, you know, um, the, the time of the no confidence motion. Let's wait for him to come back, Leonard. It's going pretty interesting, though, Leonard. That uh, Hamilton Green pension bill seemed to have been one of the first upsets for the relationship between Mr. Uh, Charandas Passat and his party. Well, obviously, anytime you talk about um, Charandas Prasad and, and the role that he would have played in history, especially the linkages to the selections 2020, it's always going to be an interesting yeah. conversation to have. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. Yo, we're, we're we're we've, been, we've been missing a piece there just now again. Yes. So here's my question for you. You yes. know, that, that fateful day when you, when you voted the way you did in the no confidence motion, sir, Clear this yes. up for me. Did anybody days prior or hours prior to that no confidence vote, did anybody at the PPP side or the opposition side approach you to ask you to vote according to what how they want? Yoga, I will say this before I answer that question directly. Mr. Jagdeo, when we were in parliament, the man would say, I would say hello, Mr. Jagdeo, he will probably get a high. Not high Charan. So I get a one word from him. We, the vote of no confidence was tabled on the 16th of November, 2018. I have not had a word with Mr. Jack Dale until when he came to Canada on the 1st of November, 2019. To have a meeting. He just looked at me and said, hi Charan, I will mention you in my speech and the conversation ended. I didn't say anything else except an okay, which he didn't hear. But the man, does not even speak to me. And I'm saying this publicly. I, I, I don't think I'll be hurting him, but I think that he still holds a sort of, a, or a level of animosity for me for having campaigned against him and called him all kinds of names when we were campaigning against the PVP. But you know, that that's an aside, but all I'm saying, the man does not speak to me. He never made me an offer or even came near to me to speak about the no confidence. And then it was tabled on the 18th of November and voted on a month later on the 21st of December when 
the 1st of December to the 14th of December 2018 was the budget debate. We were not allowed, no MP government side was allowed to leave the country because you had to stay for the two weeks of budget debate and then the following week for the no confidence debate on Friday. I did not speak to any PPP member at that time because once you've talked to anybody, I'll give you one example and then move on to your question. I was talking to Priya Manik Chan when Dr. the pathologist in Burbis was arrested and locked up at Camp Street because he did not attend the court that Justice Navindra Singh was presiding over. They sent a message to the man in Burbis. He couldn't make it down in time and asked for another day. Navindra got police to arrest him and he was put on Camp Street. So I asked Priya Manik Chan then to get the Chief Justice, former Chief Justice Ian Chang's number so see if, to see if I can help Dr. Bridge Mohan, who is a personal friend of mine. I was only talking to Priya for a few minutes. Amna Ali jumped down on me like a little boy. Why are you talking to the opposition? What do you have to, what do you have to tell these people? And I said, I'm, I, I'm like a little child. I offered an explanation as to why I was speaking to Priya Matita. So I did not speak to, I spoke to uh, boys like Nigel, Irfan, uh, Frank Anthony, but uh, Mr. Jagdeo and Gail Tishira. I don't recall having a conversation with them at all, at all, at all from then to now. So okay. note to the question that you asked me if I was offered any money by anybody in the opposition side, anybody on the government side. The, look, let me ask one thing only. When you check my tax returns, you will see, or they will see, they can check that because remember Kamraj went and picked up all my travel document, passport, picture and immigration document and gave it to a man named Compton Reed in the no confidence motion, who's a farmer in East Barbies all the way up to Mara. How can he have access to my record? So they can access my record and see my tax returns will show. I have earned, I have earned in excess of a million dollars a month, Ghana money, of course. So in one, one, one year, I will be earning at least $12 million, Ghana money. 12 times in, in another 10 years, I'd be making a million dollar US. Well, I didn't expect to be at earning a million dollars throughout my life. There's money to be made when you're a good lawyer. And even though Ramjitan said, I'm not a good lawyer, I have documents to show that. But, you know, that is an aside. To answer your question again, I will emphasize, yo, I was not paid any money by these people in the PPP or by the people on the PNC side. And frankly, how much could they have paid me to give up my life, to give up what I had, driving what they describe, what they're enjoying, the good life, a Prado, yeah. a BMW 5 to Leonard, we seem to have lost Mr. Prasad again. Yes. Um, uh, those uh, are some pretty interesting statements he's making, though, that uh, he was never approached. He never entered into a conversation. There was never an agreement. And, of course, there's never been any any financial transfers um, from anyone to him for uh, voting the way he did. Um, little so friends. I, yes. So you're back. So here is, here is, a, yeah. here is another dimension, Mr. Prasad. Um, in hindsight... That was in 2018. In hindsight, sir, if we have to ask you to vote now on that no confidence motion, how would you vote? It seems like we have lost him again. Uh, and what a time to have lost that yes, yes. conversation. <laughs> well, he said that somebody <laughs> sent in some bolts of electricity to, to, to throughout. The, uh, That's right. Level. That's right. If the situation but, remains the same, frankly, now in in the month of Sundays in. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, there you are, sir. Yeah, it's probably partisan as, as telecoms person <laughs> doing this. Anyways, if, if I have to do this again, yo, knowing the PNC, having seen them through Burnham time, and knowing now, now, I don't know that even the PNC diehard supporters should be voting for them because they see constitutional violators, liars, riggers, all kinds of things that are not good. How do you want to support people like them? Right. I will never... And if the vote of no confidence comes again, I, I will give them maybe six yeses this time. 
I want to... So, um, yes, go on, Leonard. Yes. So I think a lot of people who might not have uh, uh, spoken to you or, or just read about you through the news, um, Mr. Chandas, uh, would have wanted to know mm-hmm. on the details. You, you made mention of the fact that one month before was when the t- no confidence motion was tabled and then you, it was on this, the evening of December the 21st that it was voted on. But I want to bring you back. At what point in time during that month did you decide that I, Chandas Prasad, was going to vote in a certain way? Oh, Lord. Um, it was probably just about a week before, you know, during, during the budget debate. When you listen, we sat in Parliament in the cafeteria. And there's always the question as to who is going to support the no-confidence motion. And Volda Lawrence, former Minister of Public Health, a teacher being Minister of Public Health is beyond me, but that's another story, said to me, and uh, uh, Bonnie Raj Kumar were sitting together at one table having lunch. And the question came up from why I think Amna raised the question as to what Jack do you think? He is 32 and they go vote, vote, they go raise a no confidence motion. Who go vote for them? That is only if somebody from our side vote. Not exactly the exact words, but here's what the exact words were Volda, Volda Lawrence said, somebody go vote for them. If I find a body who vote for them, I can just kill you, I go high and throw you over the rail. The exact words from Valda Lawrence. And I looked at her and I said, you know, what is so strong about what these people are doing? The no confidence motion was tabled. It has to be debated. This is all during the budget debate, a week and a half or so before. And then when it came down to probably the last couple of days of the budget debate, the, the 12th or the 13th, I did not speak to a soul about voting. Mm-hmm. against the government. I said, if the no-confidence motion is debate, once the debate comes out, and they don't present anything to show that we're, well, they're, they're, they're strong in the government and they will do things for the people, I'm going to vote them out. And this was me surmising. This was right. me talking to myself. And so that is how that came out. Because when you listen to that uh, no-confidence debate, Joe Harmon was told by the speaker, sir, you are debating here to show how the government is doing well. You're not supposed to be bad mouthing people. He was speaking about how Mr. Jagdo treated his wife, never married, and gave the impression he was married. That's not no confidence motion you're talking. That's the man's personal life you're criticizing. And so mm-hmm. they had nothing. Then you hear Amna say, um, you vote, you, you, you table no confidence motion. You're 33, you're 32, and we're 33. Bring it on. And all that you got from them was this pompous attitude. My mind was made up. My mind was made up from about the the 12th to the 13th of December. And definitely, there was no turning back for me that morning when they started with the debate. There was no turning back. Okay. So at that moment, at that moment, when you said yes, as you remember, it went around back and you had to say yes again. Um, Yes. At that, between that two times, when the first time you said yes, then when it went around back and you said yes the second time, mm-hmm. was there any wavering in your mind? Because by then you were being insulted, you were being threatened and everything. Was there any wavering in your mind between that, that second time? And the Don't first forget time? that I was, I was also brutalized. My left arm was swollen for weeks. Well, not weeks, but swollen but discolored for weeks. Anyways, mm-hmm. what transpired. I don't know if you all look at the video again, you might see Balda talking to Patterson. When she stood up and asked for a two-minute timeout, Patterson said, we can remove him before we come back in. Now listen to Patterson, a man who can't even see straight, who was a nothing. I mean, I say nothing. He was not even working when we were campaigning. And he's going to talk about removing me. But no, Yog, I wasn't going to go outside even if the timeout was granted. I was going to sit there because they position that I took was one where nothing was going to affect me. Nothing was going to make me change my mind. I was hell-bent to finish this the way I saw it. And no confidence motion would be passed. If I'm the only person to support it, so be it. I didn't know who else was planning to, but I did that because I had to do it. The AFC sold out, and I had to remove them from parliament.
Thank you. And um, Mr. Passard, we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes, if you don't mind. We have Mr. Says Gunraj, who is online, that will give us an update of what happened at the election thing. So please bear with us a little bit. Sure, but when I come back to like you, to Mr. Passard, I want, I would like if you could wear your, your, you're an attorney at law. You have done a lot of pro gratis work for the people of Burbese. I want to ask you a specific question as an attorney of law. Yes. Were Volda to be successful in having that two minutes uh, 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 break, could she have gotten you out of parliament so that you couldn't have voted again? But we will come to that answer when we resume after Mr. Gunrads. To our viewers and listeners right. out there, we have Mr. Says Gunrads, Commissioner of GCOM. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. And we always look forward to the updates from you. And without further ado, over to you, sir. Thank you, Yog. Uh, good evening to you and your viewers. Good nice evening. Days. Good evening, Leonard and Charon. Good evening to you as well. Good evening, my brother. Uh, I am I'm almost uh, unsure whether I should be on the same program with you, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, the tail of the track today is that we've completed 54 boxes. And I'm happy, I'm happy in a sense that the numbers, number of boxes keep uh, better processed per day has climbed progressively over the, uh, over the last six days that we have started. But I maintain that I, it is possible for us to do more boxes per day if we can weed out the, some of the niggling issues that still exist. Mm -hmm. And what are some of those niggling issues? We still have the lag time in the evenings, uh, if I can so describe it. I mean, this afternoon at about between five and six o'clock, most of the stations were shutting down. Uh, you have, you have, um, during the day in the actual count process, a lot of time is spent on unnecessary aspects. For example, on elections day, every view, every polling agent is given a folio. And what is a folio? A folio is like a, a, a list of the electors that are earmarked to vote in a particular station. But what you have, you have certain information, including a picture and, and date of birth and uh, additional information that is placed there uh, for the benefit of the, of the agents to ascertain the identity of a person who presents themselves. And I've mentioned that folio for two reasons. The first reason I'm mentioning it, it's a tool. It's a, a tool, an identification tool to aid you in the process of, uh, of identifying a voter. It isn't necessary. It isn't necessary for that, whether it is returned to a polling, say, uh, to a presiding office or not, whether it's put in a box or not, is immaterial. It doesn't affect the count or the outcome of an election. So to have that necessity to painstakingly count each folio and, and ascertain that it's back in a box, you're adding 10 minutes to a box sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I've seen in some polling stations where they, they're trying to ascertain how many were issued, how many were received. Nonsense. Not necessary. Right. But the other reason I'm mentioning the folio is because you're hearing all of this chatter out there about dead persons voting and persons migrated, etc. I want to call hogwash on that from the start. Because you know what? Every single polling station, every single polling station throughout the length and breadth of Guyana benefited from at least two polling agents, one for the PPP and one for the PNC. As mm -hmm. a consequence, to come now to say, to come now to say that, oh, we did not have, um, we did not have an opportunity to say that John Jones was uh, dead or or his brother Tom Jones had migrated and for some reason they were allowed to come and vote in a polling station is nonsense because you have an agent there first of all 
that agent is equipped with the necessary tools to ascertain the identity of the person who comes in and presents themselves uh, to vote. And third of all, you had an opportunity to, to, to verify that person in, in the mm -hmm. state. So now come, and, and then assuming, assuming but not conceding that that happened, you didn't raise an alarm at six o'clock when you run outside, when, when, when polls closed and said, oh, look, 10 people turned up here and, and, um, and as far as we are aware, they don't look like they, um, they belong there, etc. You didn't raise an alarm a week later when you were trying to use um, Mingo's faulty declarations to, to, to have a result declared. Right. You didn't use it two weeks later when there were court proceedings in the, engaged in the high court. You didn't use it later when, there was a, when there was a court of appeal proceeding. But now you come during an, a, a recount process to talk about um, persons who are dead and migrated. It's disingenuous. It is so, disingenuous. So, Commissioner, I just want to clarify something because uh, during the day, Mr. Gildhari and I, we had as one of our guests, the Assistant General Secretary for the AFC, who said who that, that I may ask, uh, Mr. Uh, Leonard Craig, uh, oh. he, he said that on the day in question, this is March 2nd, that when persons walk in to vote, that if there is a problem, all the agents were regaled to do were to make a note of the objections. They could not stop the person from voting. This goes contrary, almost contrary to what you were saying, sir. No, it is not contrary to what I'm saying, you Okay. In fact, it accords with what I'm saying. Okay. That is why I'm saying, assuming what Leonard Craig said is accurate, but I'm not conceding that. I'm assuming mm -hmm. that what he said is accurate. At six o'clock when they received this collecting of reports. The next day, the day after that, they didn't come out in the media and say, they didn't come out in the media and, and say that, look, um, we have all these reports. If your agent was restricted to just noting an objection, you didn't come out later on the pub besides those reports. You're waiting two and a half months after to come and publicize those reports. It's nonsense. It is nonsense. Okay. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, um, and your other guest, and, and I, I know that uh, you would have did some reading for an LLD at one time, uh, which you were thankfully successful at. It will tell you about a recent fabrication. You can't come make up a story on the fly and expect any great weight to be placed on it, you can't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So that is that is that is there. That is and, and and what is happening now? Let me tell you what is happening now. You have agents who, whether real or imagined, claim to have in this recount process who claim to have immigration records. Now there's a legality of issue uh, a legality issue there about who is legally entitled to possess such records. Why is it? Why is my immigration record or your immigration record or the re immigration record of an average citizen in the hands of some polling agent or re uh, a part political party representative sitting in a recount station? Mm -hmm. The next thing, uh -huh. the next thing you may have, the next thing you may have, um, is um, you probably may have. Um, your tax record being right. placed in your hands. So as an attorney, thing, sir, yeah, let, let me ask you a quick, thing. go on, go on. Go, no, you go ahead. No, I wanted to ask you a quick question. You're an attorney at law, you are practicing and so forth. How easy is it for uh, a political party to go and get people's um, copies of people's death certificate? The custodian of that office, the person who's in charge of that office, is Winston Felix, who a ministry or a department or whatever was created at the, uh, when this government went into office for that purpose. Uh, okay. In addition to that, in addition to that, 
they control that office. And this, that office is under the control of a person who intends to seek, or not who intends, who is actively seeking office as a consequence of the outcome of this process. No so kidding. as we speak, you don't know the authenticity, but you're saying, you know, I don't want to get bogged down with that mm -hmm. because it's something that I've addressed several times. But I I'm understand. Just, it's a ludicrous issue to think about. I understand. But Here's another question. Quickly, let me tell you quickly what is all. It gets more, it gets more egregious. <laughs> what you have also happening in some of the stations, agents are randomly, randomly objecting to several numbers serial numbers on the list and when they are told in one instance they were told that there was no um that those persons about seven or eight names they call numbers they call those persons did not vote they quietly put their tail um they quietly put their tail between their legs and they, they went quiet in some instances they call a set of numbers and then those numbers that actually voted, they seek to object to those numbers. It is ridiculous what is being done. It is ridiculous. So Commissioner, I have one last question for you. And thank you for the updates and your observations. In a televised uh, interview this evening, um, your fellow commissioner, Mr. Alexander, made certain statements that in my mind as a layman, it, those statements say that it is the government, because the AG is an office of the government, that instructed GCOM to not proceed with the, car, with the, with the uh, recount that would have been requested by CARICOM and, and President Granger. Um, he said that it was not the ULITA more, it was not the court or anything like that, but it was the AG office that caused a stop. Uh, of anything to do with recount. Um, you care to comment on that, sir? I, I do, sir. I do. And I will try to choose my words extremely carefully in doing so uh, in an effort not to be pejorative to my fellow commissioner. My, uh, my colleague in the law, Anil Nandlal, last evening in a very long, very, very long interview to the, with the press, was at pains to narrate the series of events that started on March 2nd and, and brought us to the present day, 60 odd days. Um, I, I have to refer to I, his, his account as far as uh, I can recall, barring one or two uh, minor issues, was a very good account. And just as he remembers and accounts that for that period, it is, it, is, it is solidified and crystallized in my mind as well. On the 13th, on the night of the 13th, we had uh, in the morning at Ashman's building, when Mingo continued to read from spreadsheets and we moved that evening to GCOM headquarters on High Street. So where he had a bed sheet as a, as a, uh, as a screen. screen, a white screen. So we moved on one day from spreadsheets to bed sheets. And then the next day we learned of the uh, agreement between the president and the uh, leader of the opposition brokered by PM Motley to have this team come. The team came the very night. We met the following day, worked out the issues, etc. On the Monday, we saw all the shenanigans. You remember that, that is now the 16th. We saw all the shenanigans about uh, fumigating the conference center, police removing uh, persons from the conference center, the assault that was perpetuated against my colleague commissioner groups and Ben and so on. Nothing happened that night. We moved to the 17th now. Well, nothing happened that day in terms of a recall. We moved to the 17th now. And we were informed by the chief election officer, Keith Lowenfield, that the CARICOM team requested an order, a gazetted order, to commence the recall exercise. And I believe, Yoga, I can't recall if it was on a previous program that, that was with you or 
some uh, at some other public time for place i refrained from divulging some of the information that i had but i, I will divulge it tonight it is my understanding that the request of CARICOM was simply to inquire whether the, their presence and participation in the recount exercise was required to be gazetted in a manner similar to that of overseas uh, or foreign observers. However, however, it was coached or, or coached to the commission that an order was required. There and then, there and then, I prepared a draft, prepared a draft. I prepared it myself for the benefit of the commission. And the chairman requested that because it was something that had to be gazetted, that should require the chief parliamentary council Johnny Fongafat, that means I think uh, Charles Fong, Johnny yes. Fongafat, as we know him, to so vet it. When we proceeded to the Attorney General's chambers to meet with Mr. Johnny Fongafat, we were met with the Attorney General. James Bond was there. Uh, Raphael Trotman was there. The Attorney, uh, the, the, those three. There was uh, Mr. Fogofat and, and, and someone from his office, and myself, Charles Corbin, and Excellence Dazzle, the legal officer of the commission. Those were the persons who were there. Johnny Fogofat insisted that it was his considered opinion that we could not have done what we were proceeding to do. We requested that 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 advice that he was seeking to tender to us was detailed in writing. We thereafter proceeded, the, the meeting ended, we proceeded back to the commission with a view of reporting as, because we left the commission to proceed and we, we, we returned to report what was the position that, you know, what was the advice, etc., that we received. As I was entering, the uh, the building, the, 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 where, where the commit, where yes. office, the boardroom, and so on is. I saw marshals of the Supreme Court leaving the building, and I, in fact, I quite jokingly said to them, because only the week before there were other court proceedings, I said, "What goodies have you brought for us this time?" Right. And one of them, uh, one of them responded, um, "The goodies are big enough to be used as a door stopper." Wow. We, I proceeded to the chairman's office. Mr. Alexander was there, and they had just received; they were served with copies of the Ulita Moore matter, which contained as part of it, which contained as part of it, the um, an injunction halting the proceeding. I don't know. I don't know if my uh, if my colleague is suffering from lapses in memory. I don't think he is. I hope he is not. But mm -hmm. that is my recollection, as it were. And it was on the basis of Yulita Moore and her application that the process was stopped. Okay. Thank you for that, Commissioner. And let, let me add this yes. last bit. That was mm -hmm. Tuesday. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, it was on that very day or the following day, I think it was on that very day that we met with the CARICOM team later that evening and were informed that they will no longer stay in this country. I okay. could check the records to, to determine whether it was the 17th or the 18th that we met with them. Right. And that was a very, very sad day for this country. Indeed. And, and so I, I think what we have to do, Leonard, is one day we'll have to sit down with Commissioner Gunraj and others, because what this country needs is, is a clear, you know, chronological thing of what happened. The history needs to be documented because Commissioner, 
Leonard and I have been on air, as you know, and we have said that we are going to demand that after this election is done and over, whoever forms the next government, that there must be a commission of inquiry into GCOM, whether that is allowable by law, because you know, GCOM <laughs> has, certainly has a lot of flexibility, but um, we, the citizens of this country certainly wants to know how our, how our $8 billion has been spent or misspent and whether the laws I got, were followed. I got some ideas. I got some ideas, Gyog, uh, but I will not share them on you. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll certainly talk about it. But Commissioner, is there any other um, niggling thing that we need to know about at this stage with regards to the recount? Well, uh, part of the order uh, dictates that within the first week of the recount proceed, uh, process, that the commission will meet again to reanalyze the time frame that was set. Uh, at 25 days, you're looking at on an average of 100 boxes per day, or just under 100 boxes per day, um, were necessary to be uh, counted. Mm -hmm. Today, we have hit a high of 54. We are far cry from that. I have just detailed to you some of the dilatory tactics that are being employed, as well as some issues. Uh, for example, I was, getting, I was getting some statistics from one of the more uh, diligent persons in the process today about how long it takes to write up a statement of recount and how long it takes to detail an observation report. The documentation alone is taking about half an hour. Right. There's a ballot box, checks, ballot box checklist that has items in it, and it takes it, the documentation takes in excess of half an hour mm -hmm. to open that box and piece through all of those envelopes. Because I don't know if you've ever seen what happens at the end of a poll, uh, a, a, a mm -hmm. count. Everything is put into an envelope. The ballots of one party is put into one envelope. The ballots of another party is put into another envelope. The unused ballots are put in. Everything is envelope. Mm -hmm. So you're opening a box with several envelopes. Thankfully, those envelopes are labeled and numbered and so on. But you have to now open each of those envelopes. And then you have to document each of those envelopes. So the counting of the ballots takes a very short time. It's a very short time. It's a very it's a mechanical process, you know. Mm -hmm. And but Understood. then you have you have this, you are now bogged down by this extra bureaucracy in the count, which in my humble view is unnecessary. Right. Okay, well, thank you so very much, sir. And we will certainly look forward to your continued update as we go along. Our, all eyes are on the Artichon Convention Center this time in our history. And we certainly hope that, you know, the animosities that are spreading across the country will soon be put out by, you know, the completion of the recount and the legitimate government in place. Commissioner says, Gonrad, thank you so very much, sir, uh, for taking the time out. Before uh, before sure. I before I take your leave, uh, you sure. know, it it would be remiss of me uh, not to um, not to say um, what not to say. You said all eyes, all eyes are on G on, on the Art Chung Convention Center this time. I don't know if it was a Freud and slip, but uh, there are several kinds of eyes too, apparently, including eagle eyes. <laughs> And we will leave it like that. Thank you so very <laughs> Thank much. You. Thank you, and have a good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Have a and good I, night I, rest, I, because I treat, tomorrow uh, you're ready. Try, try to treat my colleague kindly. Uh, don't badger him too much as, as he is here. <laughs> no, we don't, we, we don't badger here, sir. We ask questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, that was Commissioner Says Gunraj, who, as we all know, has been um, kind enough to give us update uh, as we go along with our room 592, um, Commissioner Gunraj, we'll certainly see him again on Wednesday night to give us another update as to what would have happened. As we await to be rejoined by Mr. Charandas Passat to continue our conversation on his role that he played, I want to remind you that, um, you know, we continue to have room 592 tomorrow night, and we're going to invite, I think we are going to have Mr. Keon Jabor tomorrow night to come on our discussion program, our platform here to give us an update as what happened. Welcome back, Mr. Passad. And sir, let's go straight into our discussion again. Thank you. Thank you very much, you. I wanted to ask the commissioner a quick question, though. We but can certainly relay that. 
He, he's gone. He's off the air or not? Yes. Yes, he's off. Okay. But you could All ask right. him and we could ask him. <laughs> All right. No, my question would be, knowing that a wrong has been done, he's a lawyer. Should there not be some type of sanction against the wrongdoer? Mingo is noted. He's known. He's seen. The world saw that he was fiddling with numbers and that he attempted to defraud the nation. And then he continues to do that. Why is this man still allowed to be a part of this process and he can't be fired? Something has to be wrong with that. That would have been my question. Well, just for you to know and for the viewers and listeners to know, we are hoping that in a week's time, we're going to invite a panel of legal minds to discuss the election laws and to discuss yes. very, very openly what are the consequences upon okay. the Secretariat and persons at GCOM for, for, for not following those laws. So that there is something that we, yeah, that is something that we plan to do. Um, you know, of course, everybody, it's, it's such a society presently that we look at each other uh, through the lens of PPP and PNC and so forth. So everybody is yeah. kind of a little reluctant to come forward and say things. Mr. Passat, I want to get back to this discussion. You yes. have seen what has transpired from the moment you did that no confidence vote and we understand you can corroborate it or not sir we understand that you were well we all heard it you were threatened in parliament uh uh something about you gonna die or something like that right uh, that was from have you, that's no secret yes ha have you gone have you have you taken that threat seriously and gone into hiding sir how did you get out of guyana and where are you now why are you not in guyana are you, are you start, scared of your life? I'll start with the back end of the question. I am in Canada, uh -huh. and so far I, I'm safe. I don't have a problem with them sending somebody after me in Canada. But I had to leave Guyana like some secret agent because I know the PNC, and my fight as it was with the AFC would have affected, as it has, the entire parliament or government bench all AFC and APNU people. And I knew that I wasn't gonna live through the night. What I did in preparation for that final trip from perhaps upstairs to downstairs and they'll kill me in the yard somewhere, was I wrote letters to my son and my grandsons, to all my siblings, to all my nieces and nephews, three letters. They were given to my secretary to mail on the Monday, the 21 and three, the 24th of well, the Monday after the Friday, the 21st of December. And so I was prepared for that because I didn't expect to live through. Now, you asked the question, it was on camera. Well, they, they, they taped everything or they filmed everything of me going into a car behind the parliament and moving from there. And then I went to Ogle Airport in a vehicle, DPL vehicle driven by a white man. Well, at that time, they had no names. So what I did was, I moved from Parliament, now they'll know, now they'll know because I'm now giving the details. In a vehicle with four people inside, I was rushed into the back of the vehicle with one person sitting on one side and then another one coming on the other side of me and the vehicle took off with another person on the passenger side. We went into Campbellville and then I made a call. So what Carl Greenwich did, maybe that's why they fired him, when he said, that the Canadian High Commissioner was in collusion with me to overthrow the Guyana government. That man with all his years of experience. The Friday night, Nagamutu, lawyer, fake lawyer, um, the, the comedian lawyer, Basil Williams, they conceded that they gave a press release saying that the vote of no confidence has been validly passed and the government will have to resign. My take on that was 90 days. That's what Article 1066 of the Constitution mm -hmm. says, but that didn't happen. When I got out and my friend, Peter Ramsharoop, who I solicited help from in terms of getting me out. You seem to have lost Mr. Passat there. He's gonna come back, I'm sure, in a couple of seconds. Viewers and listeners, an interesting conversation with Mr. Charandas Passat about the no confidence motion and what transpired. In a few moments, yes, you're back, sir. Continue, please. I'm back. Yeah. That night, I did not call. The first time I spoke to somebody from the Canadian Embassy or High Commission in relation to my position in Parliament 
was a little after Peter Ramsarup spoke to a lady who was not Mr. Chatterjee, the High Commissioner to Guyana. She was not even in the country at that time. Let them check their records. But when I spoke to this lady, she said, Mr. Prasad, are you a Canadian citizen? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a Canadian passport? Yes, ma'am. And you are in trouble and you need some help? Yes, ma'am. She said, drive to the embassy. And I drove to the Canadian High Commissioner at the embassy. They opened the door and I was... Mm -hmm. Okay. So you would have to ask him back uh, what happened when they opened the door, right, Yog? We're getting some dicey connections with Mr. Charandas Prasad, but that is an interesting angle that uh, we are now being told. I, he said this is the first time he's relating that kind of detail, Leonard. Well, uh, not really. Um, I, I think a couple of months back, uh, just after that, uh, a few moments, I think a few months down the line, I would have mm -hmm. spoken to him in an exclusive interview. He was in Canada at that point in time. And um, he had indicated... Uh, so he's oh, back. We, he's back. Yes, sir. So, so the, last thing, the last thing we heard from you was that they opened the gate at the Canadian Embassy, the, the High Commission. Damn, yeah, we're losing space here. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, and I went in. Then she called the consular officer, a man named Richard Bellevue. Mm -hmm. He's a Frenchman. And he came and offered me assistance as a Canadian. And that is how I managed to stay safe for the night. My flight from Ogle Airport to Barbados was scheduled to leave at 6 in the morning of the 22nd of December, Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. The consular officer himself, mm -hmm. I'm not going to deny that. That's I, I don't lie, yo, I don't lie. And that's not something to lie about. The man offered to drive me to the airport in his vehicle, and he so did, with Peter Ramsroop following in another vehicle. And then they both went in with me as I checked in, and I boarded the plane. Well, Mr. Bellevue. Mm -hmm. Still dicey connections there, Leonard. Unfortunately, and, and, and he's making some statements there. I think mm -hmm. a lot of Guyanese mm -hmm. people are now learning at this point in time. Um, and so, Yog, we'd have to continue um, uh, bearing mm -hmm. out with him. Um, I think everybody is tuning in to hear what he would say here. Correct. And while we await to be rejoined by Mr. Charandas Passad, just to remind all of you viewers and listeners out there, we have been talking with Mr. Passad about his experiences immediately after moving that, uh, moving against um, the government in that confidence motion um, on that fateful uh, evening in in 2018. Yes, yes, sir, you're back. Yeah, this this this. Good. Okay, the connection is not so good. Um, are you there, sir? Okay, so there we go. Um, we were getting an update as to what transpired that night uh, after Mr. Passad, and what we got to the spot where he, Leonard, you wanted to add something? Yeah. I, no, 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 that's okay. You, yeah. um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, Okay, so Leonard, it is interesting indeed because, um, you know, Mr. Passat, there has been a lot of conspiracy theories about monies being transferred. Uh, I would certainly think if Mr. Charandas Passat had that million dollars, he wouldn't be having such a path. If you had a million dollars, you wouldn't have had such a faulty connection, right? <laughs> you know, you tell me, man, this thing is, is troublesome. I'm not getting through. I mean, I'm barely hearing you sometimes. Okay. Okay, so continue. So you were taken to the airport and you went to Barbados. I went to Barbados. Yeah, that was the first okay. flight I would be in the morning. Now, let me tell the people this. When you have a minister of public security, we know it as home affairs. Kemrad Ramjatan told the world that he offered me security and provided security for me to get to Timeri Airport. It was the same man. And you, because I know you're not, you're a very respectable individual. I hold you in high esteem. I will avoid any of my vulgarity, which sometimes is forced out of me. But that man said that he provided security for me to get to, to Mary Airport. And it was his finding and his documentation that, that he found on, on me that showed I left from Ogle. The biggest lie ever came from him. Right. 
Wow. So, Mr. Passat, you, you mentioned Mr. Ramzatan, and without going into anyone's names, here, here is what people like me in Guyana know. You were extremely close to, to all of these gentlemen, Mr. Patterson, Mr. Very Ramzatan, good, yes. all of them. You were all very good friends. Yes. Uh, how, how, how do such good friends fall apart so badly that when you, I mean, did you expect that treatment after casting your vote? Did you expect that the good old AFC, the soldiers that stood up for democracy would have suddenly called you a traitor uh, rather than support your move? Did you expect that, sir? Leonard, we, we, we needed to have a special line here, boy. We <laughs> you, 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 need, you need to give him a million dollars. You need to give him, <laughs> you need to give him a million dollars so he could upgrade that system there. Mr. Chandas, if you're listening to us, you need to upgrade the system. Yeah. Well, we can only, only who God can give, right? So <laughs> neither you nor I. <laughs> we, are, we are doing this out of our own care for, for democracy and the development of our own country here too. So uh, Mr. Passat is joining us back in a couple of seconds. In the meanwhile, a lot of persons have certainly said Mr. Passat was one very brave soul, Leonard, to, to do what he did and to keep on standing up, even in hindsight, about um, his actions on that fateful night in 20, November 2018. Well, you know, um, I, I was in the office that evening. Uh, I think it's around 9 o'clock. I remember it very, very much so because immediately the thing happened. My, my phone started ringing. Um, did you hear just what, what, what just happened? I said, what happened? Mm -hmm. Because nobody expected to, for, for the, the, the motion to go through. We think it was par for the course that, you know, it just would be struck down. But um, at 9 o'clock, around 9 o'clock that evening um, is when it all happened. But still with uh, Mr. Chandas Prasad, there's a lot of um, uh, sketchiness about his story that he isn't really, he has not really come forward. Like um, uh, the timelines, as, as as was indicated, at what point in time did he make the decisions? And I think he addressed mm -hmm. that. Um, he what, addressed that tonight, right. certainly. At what point in time did he get hold of so uh, Peter Ram's Let, Let's yes. go straight over yes. to Mr. Passat. Over to you, sir. Yeah, man. This thing we're feeling ever so often. To answer your question, we have been very, very close. But, you know, if, say, yeah, you're living in Canada and you send $100 every month for a relative in Guyana to help out, the one month when you don't send it, they will cost you from head to toe, even okay. if you lost your job because of COVID or whatever. What mm -hmm. happened was I was their best friend. I gave them, with the help from other people in Barbies, I gave them Region 6. And mm -hmm. once I decided to turn on them, for whatever reason, my choice could not have been respected. Constitutionally, I should have been out of a job for only 90 days or in hiding for 90 days. People don't see... And I'm surprised that some lawyers outside in the diaspora, one particular lawyer in England, and I'm not going to mention name, but they're saying that Granger did not violate the Constitution. He did. He did. We will leave it at that. But okay. what happened was they saw that very night, they realized that they will have lost their jobs and their perks. And a lot of them at that time, from what I know, Yoke, had done a lot of nasty things to get money particularly Kemraj Ramjatan out between him and Nagamutu. So, um, Yoga, I want to thing in here to bring him back to the evening of um, uh, December the 21st, 2018, of that uh, that very famous um, No Confidence mm -hmm. motion now. Uh, that uh, that day, uh, could you walk us through, Mr. Chandas, what happened? There was a meeting in one of the rooms uh, with regards to the AFC, the parliamentarians on the coalition side, talking to its people that uh, are warning them or advising them how they should go about uh, voting. Could you uh, bring us up to, to speed? So some uh, the people, some of the persons who are joining us may not have known what transpired there. Could you tell us what happened? Yoga, you're back with me? Yes. Yes, yes, you're back, sir. Did you hear the question, Mr. Chandas? Okay. Could you tell us what happened on the evening of, or the day of yes. December the 21st, 2018? There were some meetings in the rooms uh, at the parliament building there with the coalition people, uh, with, your, with your colleagues yes. within the AFC. Uh, why was, uh, we understand that the meetings were to tell you how you should vote and so on. Uh, who were, were in those meetings and what did they tell you? 
Some serious internet problems here. Sorry, uh, yes. our apologies, um, viewers and listeners. You're breaking. Yes, again. sorry. Are you back, sir? Maybe, Mr. Passat, if you turn off your vid, uh, is it possible to just turn off the video and have your audio going so that we can preserve the bandwidth? I, th I think this way. Let's 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 try that again. Let's try that again. So, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, it has been a very, very, uh, very interesting conversation, Mr. Charnas Passat. And certainly, one night is not enough. Uh, here, Leonardo, it, it is certainly a long story. And Mr. Passat, I'm gonna as soon as you come back, I'm gonna tell you, you need to sit and write that book. Your four years or three years in government, <laughs> you need to write that. Guys uh, deserve to know the truth. Yes, I can hear you now. Yo, very quickly. Um, we were in part, uh, sorry, we had a meeting before the debate started in the confidence motion, and it was emphasized that we will vote against the no confidence motion. And so as there, up to then, up to the last minute, there was a team. You see, I understand parliament. And a lot of my friends who said that you've been sitting there and you're not doing anything to help the people, the people voted for you, blah, blah, blah. What you can't do as a government MP, you cannot oppose anything that the government presents. You only have one chance to do that and they remove you. And so mm -hmm. after I had my discontent with the way the AFC was carrying on and the things they were doing. Patterson demanding money from people when I asked him to give them a contract in Barbies, AFC supporters. He said, man, your buy them, don't pay, man. That was what Patterson said to me. So, so I had no say and mm -hmm. it was more frustrating, but I couldn't do anything because I wanted to sit there and see what was going down. And frankly, frankly, after the no confidence motion was tabled, I thought, I thought from the time it was tabled that I could get these people, but I did not at that time take the decision to vote against them. Okay. I gave it some serious thought about mm -hmm. getting at them because so, they were abusing the people, correct. betraying I wanna, the people. I want to come back to that legal um, paradigm, the one that I asked you before. If Valda Lawrence was successful in her petition to the speaker for a two minutes break, mm -hmm. could that have resulted in your being ousted from parliament within that two minutes and so that you couldn't cast your vote again? Legally or constitutionally, yo, my vote was already tabled or taken on the first round and a yes was heard. I was insisting, uh, they insisted that I change my vote. The speaker was wrong to start back from Rajkumar, Rutherford, Charandas. He was wrong because we had already voted. He should have continued and go to Figuera and then down to the end of the line. But because the timeout was not granted, Volga was deprived of the opportunity to remove me. All it took was an email, you know, from Dr. Harold Lachman, who's the head of the list or in charge of the list for the government MPs. But well, the timeout would have taken me out of parliament. But the speaker would have been wrong to say, oh, we have to start the vote back and put somebody else to vote for me or in my place, and so they will have another no. That was wrong. Right. The vote was already taken legally. That's my take on it, and I don't see that I'm wrong. So right. I could have left Parliament after I said yes the first time, mm -hmm. and he had to count it because my vote was already taken. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know if you would remember this um, because, uh, you know, our relationship between you and I, we haven't been chatting necessarily but there has been mutual respect but you would recall in Leonard you would not know this this is the first time we are talking about this in public space in 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 the in the leading up to the elections Leonard I was called Yog Mahadi was called to be on their list right <laughs> I was called to be on the list and it, I wouldn't call the gentleman's name but you know you know Mr. Passad maybe I was closer to home. I could have done that email very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but indeed, uh, the, 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 there are so many stories we can talk about. about yes. Sir, I want to ask you this specifically. Yes. Your closeness with the people in the AFC 
And yes. I did ask you the, whether you expected that kind of a, a, a treatment. You were then treated like a untouchable. Um, your closeness. Now that you have seen from Canada what's going on here, do you think the AFC is, is still a viable party? Do you think the AFC is alive or it has been subsumed into the PNC? And, and we have lost him. You're there? Yes, you're there. Yes. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Let me tell you quickly. Um, one of the other things that came out was it was Kamrad Ramjatan uh, with that puppet for a commissioner of police, Leslie James, who were investigating Charandas smuggled gold. I'll tell you this now, and the world should know this. I have the documentation to show that I spoke to Trotman. And he was helping me to get a license to export gold because Trotman told me that seven out of nine gold exporters had their license revoked because a lot of gold was smuggled out of Guyana and did not match the gold that was received in Canada and America. And so he said, Charon, you should. And that, that is how I started. But the person I was dealing with when I offered to go after buying some gold, was for people over here. What happened then was it's the driver of Sydney Alley Cock, a guy named Errol Ross. And I have the correspondence that goes back early 2018 about buying gold, not mm -hmm. smuggling. And then how could I get it out of the country? That's the other thing. But that was the correspondence that Errol Ross gave to Ali Cock, and they give that to Ramjatan. And they used it to say, I'm smuggling gold. I bought five gallons of cash rip from the Tushau for the Joala village in, in um, Kamarang there, Upper Majaruni. Because cash rip, as you know, is something that a lot of Indian people used to cook their food with. And so I was, and I did not use the name cash rip to shield the fact that I was looking for gold. That was public, that I was looking to buy some gold. And I'm saying that again, but it was Ramjatan. It was Ramjatan who said I, I was bribed. I received 15 million TT. Man, if I had that, I'm telling you, yoga wouldn't care what happened in Ghana. I would have been happy camper. But it's not and me. I still can't. Yeah. Because and you would you have had a good internet connection. <laughs> are, are you, are you wanted to ask? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I have a question for Mr. Charandas. You indicated that you were driving Prado and BMW and so on. When you left I'm Guyana. Yeah, when you left Guyana, did you sell the Prado or the what is Prado sold before or after? I'm talking about the Prado and the thing because there's a story coming wrong that you planned this all along weeks before and uh, that uh, it could not right, have been right. a week before. Ask them. Crawford, Ryan Crawford, my colleague, was the one who bought the BMW well, well into the early part of 2018. What about the Prado? When did you and sell the Prado? He finished even I'm sorry, the BMW because he loved the car. And you know, we're friends. I sold it to him long before that. The Prado was sold after. And if anybody in GRA, if they want to check the contract, man, let them go ahead and check it. They have ways of finding people's document. The Prado was sold after, after the 2018 December 21st incident. So I had to sell it. I needed money. I sold a piece of land that I have at Delphi because I needed money. And I can't pass transport because right now, Godfrey Station is holding up the compliance for me. Interesting. Now, the, coming I back to... I received my parliamentary pension or my parliamentary gratuity. So it seems as if uh, we have lost uh, Mr. Oh, you're gone again. Oh, you, there you, you are. You, you, you're back there, sir? You're hearing us? The thing is because of me, you know. They don't want me to say anything. <laughs> okay, but... Let's hear you now. Yeah, right, I'm here right, again. Right. I'm here again. Very good. Um, you know, you know, so I want to ask you, um, Mr. Charandas, coming back... Because of me, they don't want me to say anything in public. 
So we want to apologize to our listeners and viewers yes. here. Um, bad connection. Oh man, we're gone again. No, no, no. Well, well, I want to bring you back Terrible. to the same same week there, sir. Um, obviously, getting out of this country and um, uh, making arrangements. At what point in time did you start talking to Peter Ramsarup and uh, uh, that you were thinking of this? So how did that all play out? What? About, about your Sorry, decision. I missed, first... I missed the first part. At what point in time did you start talking to Peter Ramsroop? Getting out of this country, you're making your decision, knowing what you would have been planning for that night. You said you only did it a few days before. At what point in time did you first start thing, talking to Peter Ramsroop? First thing first, I had booked my flight, and the records will show about two weeks before to come to Canada. I always get away from Guyana. First chance I get after Parliament is done because I have my son, and my two grandsons in Canada, and all my other siblings, except my big sister who's in Kanji. So I had booked a flight to Como, but what happened then was I I thought from Parliament at 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, there's no point going back to Barbies and then having to come back the next day. So I booked a flight from Ogil to Barbados for all kinds of reasons. It was the best connection I had to get to Canada, and it was also cheaper. And then I had to book it ahead of time. Which I did. And so, I I have one more question for you. Um, uh, when Mr. started off with a nonsense, I found a way out. Mm-hmm. And I spoke to me. So we seem to have a... Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. me. That you have a million dollar question, sir. That's how if I answer the question correctly, I'll win a million dollars. What you need to happen to Oh, you got yeah. I'm hearing you now. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you. Yeah, so, very, very poorly. Yes, uh, so uh, very quickly, if you're listening, Mr. Uh, Sharandas, I, I want to ask right? you. I want to ask you a question. December the 21st, 2018. A friend, a friend of mine said... Yo, let, me go ahead and, let me go ahead and ask him the question. And if he's listening, he, maybe he's he can not, answer he's it. Right. He's not on. He's not on. He's not on. But, no, um, he's uh, so he's filling some gaps yep. here that, that, that is out of the timeline. Lots of questions that would have been raised around mm-hmm. at what point in time did he take the decision. Yo, we're, we're breaking up badly, man. Let yes, me say yes. something very quickly. A friend of mine saw the, the, the post that you made and said, Sharon, I understand that you're going to win a million dollars um, <laughs> because you have a million dollar question to answer. And if you answer it correctly, you'll be paid a million dollars. I haven't heard the million dollar question yet. I know I can pass. <laughs> well, let, let me try well, to well, let me let me try to ahead. quickly um, ask the last question that, that that has been burning in my mind. I can't speak on behalf of anybody else, but I want to ask you: December the twenty twenty first, twenty eighteen. You 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 voted uh, that you always said with your heart. I, I want to say down the line: if you had to do back, knowing what Guyana have ended up into as of today, uh, would you have done it? I think you asked the question somewhat, but I want to ask you back. Knowing the people are crying now that we're in COVID-19 and we have a, a, a complex situation that is um, that involves COVID-19 as well as elections 2020, would you have done that knowing that you, you're probably a traitor or a hero at the same time? Depending bring on anything. The Seems like our connection is really bad. We, we're not hearing you at all. Yes. So what I really want to ask him, and if you could ask him, Yogi, if he, if, from, from my side, is whether Mr. Mm-hmm. Charandas, one, considers himself a, a traitor, a hero. I know what his answer is, but we right. have to we'll have it on records. And two, right. and knowing what on. we would have went into after December the 24th. Is That's all regretted? I'm hearing after December 21st. Yogi, we got badly damaged there, man. I didn't hear a thing. Yes. Okay, so the question is, uh, Leonard is asking, do you consider yourself as, as a hero or, or do you consider, what would you say to those that call you the traitor or the Judas? Well, you get a lot of that from friends on Figueres' team. Mm-hmm. I, have not, I have not gotten much in terms of abuse, but being called a Judas is not something I'll worry about. Being called a traitor is not something I'll worry about because 
if I'm all of that, I have learned from Kemraj and Nagamutu and the AFC team. So I'm still second to them. And that's why I'm not worried about it. As an AFC team, I sell out anyways, before the no confidence motion. The people said we... Okay, so we seem to have lost you again, sir. Um, Leonard, we are also running into a program time, and you know we'll have to probably pick up the conversation on another day with Mr. Charandas Prasad. Meanwhile, he's coming on back. I want to tell everybody out there, on Wednesday, we're going to have Mr. Taran Kamraj to, to discuss macro and microeconomic issues, where Guyana is and where, especially where we are vis-a-vis -vis the region and the wider world, given coronavirus disease. And also, we want to discuss his take on political economy and how are we as a nation going to develop from the economic um, stage that we are in. So that should be a very interesting conversation on Wednesday night, uh, Leonard. Yes, and, and anything to do with the economy at this stage. I mean, the yeah. people, we, 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 we have to know what is happening here. Can you hear me now again? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes. We are getting almost to program time, Mr. Passat. So we wanted I, to say that. Yeah, we wanted to say that. People think I'm a hero. I don't see me as that. I just see that I did what had to be done. And okay. I do it again if I have to. And what would so you say to the people who to you, say that you're, you, you're a traitor? What, what would you say to them? Like I said, I, I, did not, I don't think you heard that. I said, if I'm deemed a traitor or a Judas or a sellout, as they call it, I took it from Kemraj and Nagamutu and the AFC. I was part of that team. We did more selling out of the people who voted for us than I would have done alone to the, the, the 12 of us AFC people who were in parliament. My fight okay. was against the AFC. What do you predict as the future of the AFC as a party? Seems to have gone again. So, so, Leonard, certainly tomorrow you and I will continue. You want to talk about our guest tomorrow. We're going to have this PAHO WHO guest to talk about COVID and immunization. That will take probably about 15 minutes of tomorrow's program. And, of course, we'll be discussing elections and recount of day. Well, yes, I do thank you for that, uh, Dr. Yog Mahadeo. If you're now joining us, uh, this is Room 592 with your host, Dr. Yog Mahadeo, and myself. And uh, we would have had Charan Das Prasad. Uh, the, the, some people would have called him the million dollar man, but he's of course, tonight he's made it very, very clear that he has not received any money. It's a narrative that he has held on to since December the 21st, 2018. And uh, of course we know uh, that uh, at this point in time, although the connection is bad, I think we're gonna have to bring him back, um, Yoga, because there's so many other sides to the story, many gaps that needs to be still filled. And of course, as a lawyer too, he would continue to have some relevance when it comes to the history of Guyana. Right, indeed. And to our viewers and listeners out there, we apologize for the faulty internet connection that has uh, you know, created a little bit of a dissonance between us and the discussion here with Mr. Charna Passat. Certainly, Leonard, I think that what we have to do, we have to get uh, you know, we have to get Charanda's uh, part two at some stage very, very soon and have the discussion continue along that line. But we are getting to program time. In fact, we went way beyond our usual program time today. Thank you, all viewers and listeners, for joining us tonight in room five. Nine, two. Tomorrow during the day, um, Leonard, can I go ahead and make the announcement? Yes, please go ahead. Tomorrow during the day, viewers and listeners, we're going to continue taking your calls from all parts of the country. Remember, we are open. Remember that we are just serving the position here of disseminating information. Um, we are just like you. We are interested in having this process over and done with and have a legitimate government sworn so that Guyana can continue being what it is ought to be the best place, the best country in the world. Uh, so while we get to that tomorrow, we also hope to have a discussion on COVID-19. And we're going to have Paho W to join us to talk about, you know, for example, to our female listeners and viewers, how do we treat, how do we deal with breastfeeding at the time of COVID-19? All of those questions we're going to be hope to be answering tomorrow. We're going to have the specialists join us on the two o'clock program and mr leonard gildhari will of course be the feature host tomorrow for that tomorrow night we're going to get mr kian jabor to join us in room 592 to give us elections update it's been a pleasure to have you ladies and gentlemen with us tonight in room 592 on kaicho radio and we certainly wish you all a very very good night all across guyana it's a rainy night 
but let's keep our chin up. It's a nice, cozy night as well. Leonard? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yog Mahadeo. And it was interesting with, with uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Chandas Prasad, uh, who's played such a, a critical role in the rewriting of our history. And depends which side you're standing on, he's either a traitor or he is a hero. And so uh, right. that is w what we do in room 592. We bring the hard questions, we ask the hard questions, and wherever the chips fall, let it will. Correct. And thank you, Leonard, for joining us. Thank you, Kevin, our technical guy behind the scenes. Um, you know, thank you all, Kaitra News. And let me thank Glenn Lau for making this program, this airtime. Viewers and listeners, this is a free show that we are bringing to you. Neither myself, nor Gil Harry, nor Mr. Glenn Lau. It's not about the revenues here. It's about us doing what we can do to disseminate information. I'd like to thank Mr. Sis Gunraj for giving us an update. And, of course, Mr. Charandas Sad. We'll have to bring him back for Charandas Part 2. And, Leonard, we learned a new phrase tonight. And maybe it will form the title of the next book I write, From Spreadsheets to Bedsheets. So... <laughs> on that note, <laughs> on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's been good to have you in room 592 tonight. And we certainly look forward to for you to join our company tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. for another episode of Room 592 from Kaicho Radio. And, Leonard, you have the final say uh, for tomorrow's 2 o'clock show, sir. Yes, tomorrow 2 o'clock show. We, we, we're not to 2 o'clock anymore, Yog. We're going to 1.30. We've One, expanded so the, 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 our phone lines are open. Today was crazy. And there was two words that I learned today that if you put it together, you're going to have an interesting um, uh, word. And that is recount and scoundrel. Scoundrel. And so if you put scoundrel. it together, you could have a very um, uh, interesting word. And we're going to have a, an interesting conversation about that maybe Correct. tomorrow. So in the meantime, uh, as Yoke said, it's a very cold night. You guys take care um, and let's uplift our spirits. Uh, we, 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 we are good people. We, we are hardworking people. We are strong people. And nothing could overcome us. Thank you. And continue, ladies and gentlemen, to look out for room 592, where we unleash the truth. Have a good night, everyone. Sales.